Hello everyone, thank you for joining us on this edition of the 6 p.m. Primetime News Cast on Equinox Television Broadcasting from Cameroon's Economic Capital Douala. I am Babla Jonathan in our top stories in this edition of the News Road Safety Experts in Cameroon attribute the deadly accident which killed close to 40 persons on National Road Number 4 over the weekend to human errors. According to the experts, human errors are largely responsible for the accident which took away tens of lives on national road number four over the weekend in the meantime the executive president of the parliamentary network for road safety honorable malumba Esembe, mp for boya urban in the southwest region calls on drivers to exercise a high sense of respect they should respect highway code and other rules as far as the use of roads in the country is concerned in order to avoid such tragic incidents. Those were top stories. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us on this edition of the News on Equinox Television. Cameroonians are expressing deep shock following the incident that occurred over the weekend on National Road Number 4 in Dikinimiki in the Mbam and Inubu Division Center region of the Republic of Cameroon. The accident which left tens of persons, over 14 dead, and the accident occurred over the weekend in that part of the country, and this is coming to add to the recurrent road accidents recorded on highways across the country. The transport authorities in the country had been taking measures to ensure a hitch-free end of year 2020 but this accident has come to indicate that the roads are still very deadly but road experts are attributing the accidents occurring on highways across the country notably the one that occurred this weekend in Dikinimiki to human errors according to road safety experts human errors are largely responsible for the accident that occurred leaving tens of persons dead and the senior division officer of the Mbam and Inubu division in the central region of the country spoke to the press. This is what he said. We just recorded a regrettable accident on the national road number four, Yaoundé Bafusam, precisely in the Njikinemeki subdivision, Mbaman Inubu division of the central region. A 70-seater bus of the Avenir Voyage Interurban Transport Agency went down this valley. Thirty-seven deaths have been recorded and 18 passengers seriously injured. The casualties have been transported urgently to the Njikinemeki and the Makinene hospitals. The corpses will be evacuated to the Yaoundé General Hospital mortuary, where family members are expected to go for identification and collection. We once more implore road users to be vigilant on our highways, especially on this road under rehabilitation. That was the senior divisional officer of Mbam and Inubu division in the central region of the country giving some details on the accident that occurred over the weekend involving a 70-seater bus of Avenue Transport 
Agency. And I told you earlier that Honorable Malumba Esembe, Member of Parliament for Boya Urban in the Southwest Region, Executive President of the Network or Executive President of the uh, Cameroon Legislators uh, Network for Road uh, Safety, who has called on drivers to exercise a high sense of consciousness and respect for the road court to avoid such tragic incidents happen again on national highways across the country. He was speaking to Derry Jato and Boya. Take a listen. It was with deep sadness that I received the news yesterday of the catastrophic road accident that happened along the national road number four between Bafusam and Zikilimeke, precisely at Numale village. I just had a phone conversation with the SD of Mbamane Nubu and I expressed to him my sympathy and my encouragements for the work he is doing. Especially I transmitted to him and also on behalf of the network of Cameroonian legislators for good safety the deepest sympathies that we have towards the bereaved families and also towards the survivors. It is a very sad day for our nation to lose so many lives. He told me close to 40 so far have been identified today. It is a sad day and I want to use this occasion to call upon drivers to actually beg them to exercise prudence on the roads. It is very essential that we keep to the speed limits which are provided for by law. As a network of parliamentarians for road safety, we shall continue the advocacy to make sure that we have laws and that our nation also ratifies treaties, international treaties that will guarantee greater road safety in our, on our roads. More especially in 2021, we are going to engage the ministry's concern through the mechanism of parliamentary control of government action to make sure that the sums of money allocated to them in the state budget are effectively and judiciously used to enhance road safety in our country. Honorable Malumba Esembe, Member of Parliament for Boye Urban in the Southwest Region, Executive President of the Network of Cameroonian Legislators for Road Safety Legi Sekurut, speaking there to Derek Jato in the Boye. And I told you earlier that road safety experts are attributing the accident in Ndikinimiki on National Road Number no. 4 over the weekend to human errors, according to analysis of uh, road safety issues, the accident was largely or to a greater extent caused by human errors, considering the fact that the stretch of road where the accident occurred is relatively, is in a relatively good state compared to other roads across the country. We'll be coming back to that report in a short while. Time for us to talk about the fire incident this weekend at the Mbopi Market here in Cameroon's economic capital dweller where over 21 shops were reduced into ashes by wild flames and it is not the first time that fire is consuming shops in that market. It has become a recurrent uh, problem that is uh, occurring at a at very close intervals of time, fire incidents have um, occurred in that market here in Cameroon's economic capital dweller. An enormous material uh, damage was recorded in that incident, uh, goods consumed, reduced to ashes by the wild flames at the Mbopi market here in Cameroon's economic capital dweller. Now, coming up, for me, Armstrong Sander takes us back memory lane into the major incidents recorded within the context of the four-year-long armed conflict in the northwest and southwest regions of the country throughout the year 2020. His report. 2020 has gone down into the annals of history 
as a year of tragedy that can only be likened to that year when Okunko took 800 seats of yams from Mwakibi as painted in the novel Things Fall Apart by renowned Nigerian writer Chenwe Achebe. That's what COVID-19 has done. But within the Anglophone crisis, 2020 began with the killing of a separatist leader, General Chacha, in Kumbu, in the Bui Division of the Northwest Region, on January 25, 2020. 14 February 2020 welcomed one of the major incidents, the Ngarbu massacre in Tumbo village, Ndu subdivision of the Donga Mantung Division, Northwest Region. It took close to three months for findings of an investigation to be published on April 21, 2020, indicating that 23 people died in the incident. March 8, 2020 saw the explosion of an improvised device at the heart of the Commercial Avenue in Bamenda, where Governor Adolf Lele Lafrique was chairing activities of the International Women's Day. Ten persons were wounded, with five severely wounded, according to official sources. The Bamenda explosion came less than 24 hours after an attack on a police and a gendarmerie post in Galim, a town in the Bambotos division of the neighboring West region to the northwest region of Cameroon. April 3, 2020 saw the appointment of Minister Paul Tasson and former Men John Donatos as coordinator and assistant, respectively, of the presidential plan for the reconstruction and development of the northwest and southwest regions. Their 90 billion budget had been fixed by President Paul Bia on December the 5th, 2019. Paul Tasson and John Donatos will later carry the PPRD to Bamenda on June 22nd, 2020, and to Boya on June the 29th, 2020. May the 10th, 2020, another tragic incident took center stage. The assassination of Princely Ojong, the mayor of the Manfe Council in the Manu Division of the Southwest Region. August 11, 2020, social media in Cameroon got flooded with the beheading on camera of a certain comfort Tumasang in a street in Muyuka, Muyuka subdivision of the Fako Division, Southwest Region. Less than a month later, and on September the 1st, 2020, a police inspector, Nicolas Joseph, will be killed at the city chemist's roundabout in the city of Bamenda, a killing which immediately ushered in a mixed security operation, dubbed Operation Bamenda Clean. It was during Operation Bamenda Clean that a certain separatist general, Matt Dock, was killed on September 6, 2020. October 13, 2020, another separatist general, Ayeke, was killed in Lebialem Division, Southwest Region, and his body publicly displayed at a popular road junction in the city of Kumba in the Meme Division of the same region. October 24, 2020, welcomed another shocking massacre, the Kumba Massacre, where seven school kids were killed on campus. November 5, 2020, the paramount ruler of the Sot Fondom, Fon Sem Binglo and his eminence Christian Cardinal Tumi are kidnapped by separatists in Baba village in the Ngokitunja division of the Northwest region. December 14, 2020, three traditional rulers are kidnapped in Boya, chief town of the Southwest region. A tragic incident that will later cost the life of one of the traditional rulers, His Majesty Chief Ekomengale, of my 14 debander. Limited technical capacity, the divergent attitude of member states, and to an extent, the absence of sanctions against non compliant states are some of the issues still retarding the effectiveness of sub regional integration within the Central African Economic and Monetary Community, CEMAC zone. And these are some of the issues that members of the Economic and Financial Reforms Program 
program of the Central African Economic and Monetary Community, Pref Sema, are discussing in a three-day meeting here in Cameroon's economic after Dwala, and they are discussing on uh, how to step up regional integration and make it a reality, profitable to the people of the Central African uh, sub-region economically and in the social uh, domain. The experts from the uh, PREF CEMAC, from PREF CEMAC, are uh, uh, discussing strategies to enforce the implementation of regional integration uh, reforms in the financial and economic uh, domains in order to enforce the uh, reforms and get the benefits flowing down to the man on the street, so to speak, for greater details. Take a listen to Professor Michel Sir Njena. He is the permanent secretary of the Economic and Financial Reforms Program of the Central African Economic and Monetary Community, Pref Semak. Our head of state, they did decide during the meeting in Yaoundé that we are going to implement 12 projects to integrate our region economically, make sure that we don't go and buy things that we, we can produce in our region, making sure that you can go from one capital to another, making sure that we have electricity, because you cannot integrate in the darkness, and making sure that the population, our young people, they are well educated. So that is why we have 11 projects. We are meeting today in Douala to study the conditions of the financial announcement made in Paris, to go project by project, to see the modalities of implementing those projects, then to go back to the head of state and say, this is what we found. Those are the result, so that they can give the blessing to start implementing the project by the technical negotiation on the field. Because if you just have announcement and you don't take steps to implement, there will be no implementation. Our population, they want results. They don't want theory. They don't want announcement. Announcement, good. The financing is good. But what they want, they go to the market and see that the products are there. The rules, we can build the rules see that the hospital we have products in the hospital now back to the problem of road accidents in the Republic of Cameroon the Ministry of Transport has uh, launched a nationwide uh, road safety uh, campaign in order to enhance uh, measures that will prevent the occurrence of such deadly incidents like the one that occurred this weekend in Dikinimiki on National Road Number no. 4 which took away over 40 uh, lives and of course the ministry is stepping up campaigns to enforce the respect of the highway code and other uh, norms governing the transport sector in the Republic of Cameroon. And I told you earlier that the uh, some road safety experts in Cameroon have attributed the incident in Dikinimiki last weekend to human errors. They explain and analyze the situation indicating that the accident um, should have or was caused to a greater extent by human errors. In as the report. We'll come back to that report in a subsequent news edition. It's time for us to go out of the country. 30 candidates, including two former presidents and two former prime ministers, are standing for election in Niger's presidential and parliamentary elections. And the voters began voting early yesterday. And a 30 year old Mohamed Bazou, right hand man of outgoing president. President Mohamed uh, Isufu is the favorite to win, and the former interior minister, 60 years old, is aiming for an outright victory in the first round, something that no candidate had done before. He is focusing on security and education. Over 7 million people are eligible to vote in Niger's presidential and parliamentary elections now take a listen to outgoing president mahamadu isufu and one of the voters 
cette première alternance, je l'espère, va permettre au Niger de consolider son statut de modèle de démocratie en Afrique et dans le monde. We pray to Allah to choose as the president who has the most mercy for the people, a president who won't betray the country and won't betray the trust of the people. That's our wish. It's also our wish that Allah may help to make the poor, the peasants and the breeders happy. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for staying with us. Coming up next, Ekinoxwa.